Hello, my lovely nail enthusiasts. Welcome back to the channel. For those returning, it is so glad to see you again. What you do with your nails? They look so cute. They always are so pretty. <laughs> And for those new in the room thinking, who is this crazy lady that I have just stumbled upon? Well, let me be so kind to introduce myself. My name is Rocky and I have been a home nail tech and hobbyist for the past 20 plus years with a deep love and passion for nail enhancements and artistry. So today on the channel, we are doing something that a lot of y'all probably never thought you would see if you've seen my past videos. I am a gel girly. It is what I am all about. But I did get my start in regular polish like most people. And I wanted to go back and try regular polish again because there's so many pretty colors out there that I, I want to try. But I want gel. I don't have time to sit there and wait for it to dry. I need it to dry now. So... I bought a couple of things. I got some cool regular polish inside of this box here. And I bought this here off Amazon. We'll zoom out. This is from a company called Sensational. It is supposedly supposed to turn regular polish into gel. So sit back guys relax and we are going to try a little science experiment and see can we turn regular nail polish into gel <laughs> guys thank you so much for joining me today so the first thing we are going to bring out is what's inside of the box Ooh, even i have not opened it yet i just covered the labels because you know security haha uh -huh. uh <laughs> so this here is from a little company called ilnp it is known as i love nail polish it's a company based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, and they only sell regular nail polish. I looked all over their website. They do not have any type of gel nail polish at all yet. And the colors, I have been so interested in this company for so long, and their colors are so pretty. So... I saw on Amazon, I, I went hunting, and I knew of like some ways of using like top coat and base coat to kind of make it or, or even using like a gel top coat over it. So I mean, I know some workaround ways, but I was on Amazon and I saw this here and I couldn't find a whole lot of videos on it on YouTube or anywhere. It looks like the name of the company is Sensational. I don't see any other names on it yet. I haven't even opened this yet either. But supposedly, it is supposed to turn your polish into gel. And there's like a little... There's a little converter in here and some primer. And it gives you a little mixing pot. And apparently even an LED lamp. So we will test that lamp out and see how it works. But first, let's get into this box here. So this is my first time ordering from ILNMP. I've never purchased from them at all in any way, shape, or form. I, I'll be honest, I haven't bought regular nail polish since about 2020. But I haven't bought, I think even before that, the last time I bought regular nail polish, I was like 17, 18, and I'm almost... Uh, I'm a lot older than that now. <laughs> uh, way older than that now. So, um, this is something a little new for me. I haven't played with regular polish in a long time. I would think the formulas have come a long way, especially since just buying them in the drugstore. This is a boutique line of nail polish. This is actually made in las vegas nevada there is a beautiful story behind the woman that creates this nail polish and the reason behind why she creates it um it's all there on the website at ilnp.com so this packaging real quick is super cute and they give you this little holographic sticker Ooh. <laughs> 
and there was a little sheet in there uh, giving me a reminder of everything that I ordered. I ordered five polishes in total. Each one of them was $12.50. There was a 20% discount, I think, because it was my first time ordering. They offered free shipping, so my grand total was $54 after everything was said and done, even with taxes, so that's pretty cool. And I got five colors. I got Eclipse, Shooting Star, High Roller, Abracadabra, and After Hours. Some of these are magnetic. Some of them just have like a holographic glitter or shift to them. But all of them, uh, as you could guess, have purple in them somehow. <laughs> Staying on theme. I also, because these are boutique ones, and there might be a lot of us that don't want to order nail polish online, or it's just easier for us to go to a store and buy it. So I saw this one here. It's by Sally Hansen. It is their Miracle Gel. I haven't opened this one yet either. Ooh, that is so pretty. I can't wait. Um, so I also got this one here to try out so we could have something to test it against when it comes to a drugstore brand. Do they both work the same? Does one work better than the other with this kit? And I also, since I was there in the store, we're going to test these out today too. These are some Sally Hansen Salon Gel Polish. Not Miracle Gel, which is... It's like a gel, but it's still just a regular nail polish. There is no lamp needed for any of these polishes here. But these two here do require a lamp. The, uh, like I said, it's step two. So I was really curious to see. I didn't realize you could buy gel polish in the drugstore. I went to Walgreens to find this, and I bought some other little items. And I saw those, and you can buy a lamp too, but I was like, I already have a lamp, I'll, I'll pass on that right now. It was like $30, $40 for the Sally Hansen lamp at Walgreens. So I thought these would be cool to test out, see how they work. Again, for those of us who don't like to buy stuff online. All right, so I got the area mostly set up. I've got my big box of magnets out because some of these do have a magnetic shift in them or you'll have to use a magnet to pull the, the shift out more. What we're going to do next, I want to go ahead and open up this box here so we can see what all we get and how this little science experiment is going to work. I got all the tools out. We got some swatch sticks. We want to try these colors out before we jellify them. Oh, there's our lamp right on the top. That's a little cutie. Oh, it's so tiny. So cute. Well, what else do we got in here? Another box at the bottom. All right, I paused and went off screen real quick to go wrestle it out the bottom of the box. That was insane. So, this lamp here is, we'll see how many watts it is right away. It might be some more info here on the instructions. And then we've got a little USB cord to plug it in. It does not have any type of built-in battery, so we're going to have to plug it in to use it. It's got four lights inside that are decently spaced out. And this is the polish to gel, the gel primer. Oh, they give you the little block to plug it into. So that's cool. At least you know you're getting the appropriate watt and amperage off of the block. I appreciate I appreciate this so much. Like whenever you buy these little kits off Amazon that offer like poly gel and gel polishes in it and they give you a lamp, they'll go, they'll always give you the core, but they'll never give you the block. So I always am like unsure. Am I using like the proper amperage and wattage? Just, yeah, <laughs> I work in the tech industry. So that is, that's the kind of stuff I'm very picky about. 
This is the little mixing pot to mix it in. And this is our gel cleaner. Okay, that's cool. Some little instructions, some lint-free pads. They also give you a cuticle pusher so you can mix it around in a little file. So I'm going to look over these instructions real quick off camera and read through them just to get an idea of how this is supposed to work and how we mix it. So give me one second and we'll be right back. All right, we're going to zoom back in while we swatch these instructions are fully read now. I think I am ready. Oh, wow. I forgot that about regular nail polish. The smell just knocks you backwards. Whew. My goodness. <laughs> Strong. But this first one that I'm using here, this one is called Eclipse. And this one does not have, you do not have to use a magnet to activate it. They do recommend two to three coats for maximum payoff. Now I'm just going to get the first coat on. So far I'm liking the payoff. The amount of glitter that's in there from just one swipe is amazing. I do want to build it up though a little bit more. But look at that. Oh my god. Look at that bottle. <laughs> it is so... How could you not want to order? If you are a nail polish fiend like me, when you see that, you just like, I need this in my collection. And what I love about this is they're like a soft, rubbery mat. It's so nice holding on to the tops of these bottles. This one here is called Shooting Star. And all of these bottles are also 12 milliliters. This one, they do recommend to use the magnet with it to help activate it. And as well, using two, three coats to help build the color up. When I use a regular nail polish that has a magnet activation to it, typically the first coat, I won't go in with a magnet. I'll just kind of lay the color down and then use the magnet but it's been a very long time since i've used regular polish let alone a regular polish with a magnet built into it so let's pull one of my magnets out here we'll pull out a pretty standard one people use the problem you have too many magnets <laughs> and i Booped it. I saw that. Let's fix that real quick. A lot. Just a little bit to fix that little spot I tapped it on. Okay. It's pulling it out some. You want to hold it as close as you can without actually touching it. And I'll normally leave it there for about 10, 15 seconds. And you can see it pulling it towards the center. Almost in like a diagonal line there. I feel though with most cat eyes in a regular polish, you're going to need two, three coats to kind of build it up before you're going to be able to play with the magnets in there and really pull out the design. It's pretty. It's so pretty. <laughs> this one here is High Roller. This is the one thing too I like about regular nail polish. You can just look in the bottle and see what color you're going to get and you're pretty much guaranteed whatever's in the bottle is what you're going to get on your nails. You might just have to use a couple coats to get there, but you're going to get there. <laughs> oh my goodness, that purple is everything. And I know I probably should use a base coat, but there is no base coat or anything. I'm just putting this polish down. 
Oh my goodness, as quick as I can to see the colors. Oh, that's so pretty if I stop bumping on it. Oh my goodness. I love that. This one here also requires a magnetic wand. So let's see what happens. Oh, I held it there a little too close. <laughs> but you can see it pulled a lot of the pigment there towards the middle. So maybe I just didn't swipe enough down on that one first before trying the magnetic gel out. And I was able to just easily wipe that away with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. It is your best friend when you are doing nails. <laughs> this one here is called Abracadabra. They also, again, with all these polishes, they recommend two to three coats for an ideal finish. And I definitely want that finish. Oh, that's so pretty. This one here is not magnet activated. It just happens to have a lot of glitter and shift inside of there. Such a beautiful royal, like purple blue. I'm doing more of a floating technique too, rather than swiping, because it does have glitter in it. And also I notice if I'm doing more of a float with this, I'm not getting any patching or peakiness. I'm not getting any stroke lines left behind. This last one here is called After Hours. It's, oh, the way... That glitter hits against the blue is just memorizing. <laughs> After Hours also requires a magnet as well. They do sell a magnet on the website, but as you can see, I have so many here. It's truly not necessary. <laughs> oh, that blue is majestic. We need to put that on a little thicker. There we go. That is so pretty. I personally, right now, looking at this, I'm liking this a lot more than the gel magnetic polishes. I just, it's a personal thing. Maybe it's a user. After all the years of using them, I just feel like I never get the color or the payoff that I'm truly looking for. And these here, since they already have a black base to them, I don't have to worry about how the colors are going to play and build against the black. Are they going to pop just right? It's already all built in for me. I just have to apply the color and choose the way I want to activate oh wow look at that that is beautiful that was so easy and effortless I love it oh my god if we can turn these into gel polishes I am sold I am sold I I I L M P I will buy I will start buying all your products oh my god <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and try out this last one I got over here from Sally Hansen, the Miracle Gel. All right, so let's... This one here is almost the full 15 milliliters. This one I bought, it was almost $13 at Walgreens before like taxes and all that nonsense. And that is exactly what I thought it would be. It would be like a chameleon, purple, blue. I love it. I love it. And this one doesn't have any uh, 
glitter in it that needs to be activated by a magnet. Oh, that's so pretty. And it does look, I will say, even these, I'm sure once I top coat this, this is going to look just like gel. This one here definitely is already looking like gel. <laughs> they are not lying about it being miracle gel there. You can see from how they're drying, you can definitely tell that it's regular nail polish. Man, that color payoff is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. While we're here swatching real quick, and I'm letting those dry for another moment, I want to also show off these Sally Hansen gel polishes that I bought. These here were $16.99 each, so they are, um, at least in my neck of the woods, they are a little on the pricey side. This one here is called Rosy Cheeks. It's number 902, and I needed a new kind of like beigey, pinky kind of color, and this looked like it was going to work. I couldn't tell from the picture or the swatch online, but it looks like there's even some little micro dusting of like some silvery pink glitter in there. Yeah, there is. Okay. This is a... This one feels a lot better. It doesn't feel as watery or runny. It seems to not have the patchiness either. And I feel like it self-levels out a lot better. And it's got a good payoff in color. It's a little bit on the jelly side. Not quite an icy. Alright. And this is what these two back here will look like once you cure them. I really like this rosy cheeks one. This is super adorable with the little light shimmer in it. And once this one dries down, it's not so bad. It's a little on the jelly side. Maybe it could have been me and maybe I bumped it, but there is like a little peeking down here where I can see the nail itself, like the gel didn't hang. It also could be because I didn't use a base coat. So we'll let that one go, but... <sighs> It's not the color I was hoping it would be, and it's definitely one where you have to trust the end result, because during the application process, it just does not, does not look like it's going to go good at all. I also went ahead and have applied two more coats to all of these ones here, and they are so stunning. And it seemed the first coat, I did do them a little on the thin side. There was also no base coat, so there wasn't anything else that I had to worry about um, drying down underneath. But these nails all took about five minutes to dry down. They were sitting underneath the ring light the whole time. So it could be that that light helped speed it up. But look at that. Look at that cat eye that's in there. It's Oh, gorgeous. And this one here didn't have the cat eye to it. It's just a beautiful, bold color with a lot of gold and similar colored holographic shift glitter. So pretty. I could sit here and look at that all day long. <laughs> And this last one was the Sally Hansen one, which doesn't have any type of um, cat eye effect or magnetic activation to it. So what we're going to do next, I read over the instructions. Let's move these guys out the way. They're still a little wet. And what I'm going to do next is we're going to test out how one of these colors will work it does recommend that when you mix the color you mix the color uh using the brush that comes with the actual color itself 
And I think I want to try... I think I want to try this one here because then we don't have to worry about like the cat eye or anything extra about it. We're just working with the color, so to say. And let me double check the instructions and see which one I was supposed to use first. Okay, so I feel like I should be using this first from how it reads. They recommend six drops of each. So let's do this. One, two, come on, three, <laughs> wish they'd give you a little dropper, four, five, and six. And we're going to take that moment you have already got them out of order. We're going to take this one here. Yep, after hours. Or wait, excuse me. It was Abracadabra. That is the one that does not require the magnetic application. One. Two, three, come on, <laughs> four, five, and Come on, six. I believe in you. All right, so we got our six drops. Okay, so before we mix it and everything else, because I need to let this air dry, supposedly you're supposed to put down this gel primer first. And that was a little... This is very sticky. Um... Y'all, I might be crazy, but I, I think there's nothing in Y'all, there's nothing inside of here. It's totally empty. And, like, around the lid, you can see where, like, it's all been, like, gunked up so it must have all leaked out at some point okay well i guess we're gonna forego the the gel primer part i don't even think there's any on the end of the oh, that's gonna be interesting because it says you have to apply a thin layer of the mixture to your okay uh, that's not gonna happen now so <laughs> we're gonna mix this around and supposedly i'm supposed to use the brush that it comes with the meaning the one that i dropped the nail polish in with all right i feel like that's mixed up pretty good i know they say to do that but what i'm gonna do first is I'm gonna see what happens if we just paint it on like I normally would I didn't have my brush inside of there we'll use this brush so it does have a gel like consistency to it it is a little bit thicker than what it was before And I have to keep in mind it went on pretty opaque when I used it as a polish to the first round. So it may need a couple of coats to build up. It goes on pretty smooth though. 
very smooth. So let's move these things out the way, move the little pot out the way. And this is the little lamp that it came with. All right, so the lamp is not gonna work if I'm not actually using my real hand. So I'm gonna put this in my Enel Couture lamp and see how it cures. Well, that's curing. Let's go ahead and try it this other way and use the brush, my actual brush brush. Scoop some of this up. Now you do want to be careful when you're using this sensational product. It does very clearly on the back say that it has HEMA in it. Uh, it is one of the main ingredients. So if you have an allergy to HEMA, maybe something you want to avoid. I think I might have to make a little bit more to get where I'm trying to get to. And they do recommend before you put it back in the bottle to wipe it off. That's why they provide you with some of those lint-free wipes so that way you can Wipe the brush off before you stick it back in your bottle and add any of this into that. So I've got it painted. Let's see how it cures. This is without using the primer that they recommend you to use. And this is just using a regular brush to apply it on. And it is... I left that in my lamp for 60 seconds. Any other nail gel polish I cure for 60 seconds it'd be done so this is not looking good so far guys <laughs> so it's cured or at least it should be it's been in there 60 seconds and that little lamp it's only going to cure it for 30 seconds in fact what exactly does it say so I place my hand in the lamp, it's going to cure it for 30 seconds, and then I'm supposed to apply a second layer, cure it for 30 seconds, and then apply a thin layer of polish the gel transformer and cap the nail and cure it for another 15 seconds. So maybe this is the tacky after layer that you would get with regular gel polish. Okay, all right. Let's make another batch of this and we're going to try painting a second coat on like it says. So I used six drops. I'm probably going to want to use a lot more than that. This go around. We got one. We got two. And sixteen. Alright, so I've got sixteen drops of the polish gel transformer and now we're going to use 16 drops of the ILNP abracadabra again so one <laughs> one uh, 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 two that was a big two three oh these drops are coming off much bigger three four five six all right, and now we've got 16 drops of ILNP also in the little mixing pot. So now all I gotta do is mix it up. That is, that is so pretty. I'm not even, that's, oh, it is, it's just a little jar of magic. That color is so pretty. And you know, it did cure in five minutes, and this is when you don't have to activate with the magnet. And let's see, this one here would be Abracadabra. This has probably been on the second coat. I would say I've been recording now roughly 10, 15 minutes since I last did this one. So it's probably 20 minutes in total now. 
and this one feels super dry top coat it and you're done so <laughs> so let's try first we're gonna do this one here with the brush method let's get enough on our brush Still kind of on the watery side. Not quite. I, I feel like it was more had a better consistency when it was regular nail polish as opposed to transforming it into this gel polish. So and we're also not using the the gel primer. So, it could be the gel primer part. What I do like is I am getting a color payoff. It, it's self-leveling now and the color's looking a little bit better. And what I'm liking is it's got like this jelly, almost icy consistency to it with the opacity. But it's got all this amazing sparkle in it. So, okay. I can't... I kind of like it. I kind of don't like it so far. <laughs> Let's try using the brush method. And we're going to use the brush that comes with the nail polish. And I'm just going to wipe off as much excess as possible. going to dig our brush around in there for a minute. I feel like because there is still some maybe trapped up in the bristles, that's why it's... Or maybe it's just the brush that I'm using. It's probably the brush that I'm using. It's not really the most appropriate brush to be using for painting nails um, or putting on polish. It's just the closest one to me that I could grab. So it could be a little bit of that. I'm not using the correct brush to get the color payoff that we're looking for. Let me go in a little bit more with this and kind of pat it some more. I gotta be careful because it is a little like tacky dry underneath. I think it's mostly this brush I'm using. That's why we're not getting the, the results that we should get. Let me go get another proper brush. One second. All right, nail besties, sorry about that. So I've got another brush here. This is one that I got a while ago with some of my Model 1's color cubes, and this is meant to help apply um, gel polish. So this here, and it's got a different applicator. As you can see, it's a little bit more rounded oval shape as opposed to this one, which is a little bit more squared shape. So it is going to help me pick up the polish a little bit better and help me spread it evenlier. Yeah, I think we had a brush problem. I do kind of think not using that gel primer is kind of affecting it a little bit. But there's only one way to find out and that is write to that company and say, Hey, I didn't get my gel primer. Can you hand send me some gel primer, please? <laughs> A lot of it was the brush I was using. And I expect the first coat to go on pretty sheer. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to let this one cook. Come back. Put a second coat on. Then I'll go ahead and cook all of them. And then we will come back and put on supposedly the polish to gel on top of it. <laughs> Alright. So while we were away off camera... What I did is I went ahead and cured these nails like the instructions stated after I did a second coat. This one here was using this brush to see if it gave me any different uh, appearance. And it definitely does feel like it's a thing where you have to trust the process. This one I used the brush that came with the INLP bottle. And these two are just brushes that I had laying around. And I do feel like this gave me better results over just using a random brush I had laying around. And I think that's because there's still 
little bits of product within the bristles because I'm not fully cleaning it out before swiping it around in these little mixing pots. I also, so we could have another non-boutique, just one that you would get in the regular drugstore that is mass marketed, mass produced. Uh, I mixed up this little Sally Hansen one. I did 12 drops of the Polish Gel and 12 drops of the Miracle Gel and mixed it around. And again, I did each thing. This is two coats using the brush that comes with uh, and I cured between each coat. And this one here is using a gel brush that I got from Enail Couture. It was my gel oval number six brush with Kalinsky hairs. And I do feel it worked a little bit better. So it could have been the brush that was throwing off these two nails down here. But whenever I use the brush that comes with the polish, I definitely felt like I was getting very good payoff and results. It was really easy to wipe out of the brush, so that was a good thing. What we're gonna do next is it recommends to use this polish to gel to coat the top, uh, almost treating it like a top coat and using it to cap the nail. So we're gonna go in and apply this. And all of these nails do have a sticky or tacky layer to them still. And so do most gel polishes in general. So I'm almost going to treat that as just whatever, a, you know, a normal gel nail would do. You would have that tacky layer. I didn't try to wipe it off with alcohol because it doesn't tell you to in there. And I'm kind of treating that layer almost as if it's like a base coat to help get this uh, polish to gel to stick together. That way they have something to adhere and it's not just sliding right off from it. I'm gonna go back in and properly cap the nail. And we're gonna go in and do it with this one here. I'm really interested to see like how shiny of a look it will give. Are we still gonna have a tacky layer afterwards? I also got some regular gel top coat. This is also from Enail Couture. This is their shiny. So this is a glossy and this will be a velvet matte top coat. It recommends that I only need to put these in the lamp for 15 seconds. And that's using a much lower powered, lower wattage lamp than what I have. So I am going to follow the instructions first, put them in for 15 seconds after using this Polish Gel Transformer and see how tacky of a layer we have. And we're going to zoom in a little bit. I've had them in there for 15 seconds. It does have a... Yeah, I, when I pick it up, I can see it. It does have like a slickness to it still. Like it's not fully cured. I'm able to pick it up on my fingers and see the, uh, the shimmer from the liquid that I pick up off my nails. So it says 15 seconds. I'm going to do what I normally do with gel polish. I'm going to put them in my lamp for a full 90 seconds. So hang on tight guys and let's get these things cured and see how they feel after that. So I haven't put any top coat yet on these. I just let this cure for another 90 seconds with one coat of this polish to gel like it recommend. It said 15. We still had a crazy tacky layer and it's still is like slick and tacky. Oh, does it tell me? Okay, so it's finished by removing the moisture layer. So supposedly this is supposed to be the moisture layer. So let's see. I'm going to use one of their lint proof wipes. So they can't be like, oh, we didn't use our wipes. I'm using their wipes. Um, that seems like more than moisture. 
Like, you can see where I'm rubbing, like, pieces or flicks of stuff off. Like, you can see where you're rubbing off the coating. It's not... Was I supposed to rub it off in between? No, place hands and... Yeah. You only do it at the very end. Alright, so let's try this out of curiosity. I did take one of these nails here that I just painted with regular polish. There was nothing else on them. No base coat. None of this tramp. Nothing. Just remember, it was just the gel. Or not the gel. <laughs> the polish. I took this one here that we painted originally with the two coats. And then I used my shiny gel on top of it and cured it for 90 seconds. And look at that. Tell me that don't look like a jail nail. And I didn't even have to go through all this nonsense. And truth be told, these cured a lot faster than what I remember. Even like the ones that claimed they would cure in one minute. I never had gel or gel nail polish cure that quickly no matter how thin of a layer I did. So the fact that two coats of this cured in under 20 minutes... That's not too bad. That's kind of livable with. And then I was able to coat it with just a regular gel polish and lock it all in. And it has that feel of gel polish. It looks like a gel polish. It's so, so far the $17 does not look like it was worth it at all. <laughs> But let's go ahead, let's see what happens if I put my shiny on top of it. This is the one where I quote unquote wiped off the moisture layer. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's go ahead and use this one. And we're just going to paint right over this quote unquote moisture layer that's here. And we're going to paint over this moisture layer. I am doing it a little fast and rough. I am totally going to admit I am not going for perfect application on my top coat. I'm just going for a let's get it on there kind of deal. And it is catching in certain spots when I'm laying it down. That could be the quote-unquote moisture layer that it's catching on to. So, who, who knows? I definitely will say this. I do not feel this was worth... I don't think this was going to be worth it at all. But let's go ahead, pop these nails in. And when I normally do any type of top coat and I'm finishing my nails off, I like to cure for a full 90 seconds to make sure everything is fully cured and done so we're gonna let that cure for the 90 and we'll be right on back so i got 20 seconds on the lamp but i just wanted to come back on here real quick while we're waiting and just i forgot how strong the smell of nail polish is like my husband thinks the monomer is strong or like the smell from the matte nail um matte gel polish she hasn't experienced anything yet when you're sitting here sniffing in nail polish fumes. Like, I am... Ooh, I am lightheaded right now. <laughs> but all the nails are done curing. And this is with the final top coat. Just using a regular gel top coat on them. No hard gel or anything like that. And they do, as expected... They feel nice. There's no tacky layer on top of them. There is a tacky layer here on the side, but I didn't cap here. So anything that may have rolled over on the edges and onto the bottom, like I can still feel it. But that makes sense. I didn't get down there with the gel. I wasn't trying to get that deep about it. It does seem to be on there. I don't feel... Oh, I can't. Found a spot where I can peel it. But it did stick, so that might be part of it. 
I'm not finding places where I can peel it up very easily, so that's a good thing. Hey now, besties. Rocky from the future here to deliver my final thoughts. I was watching the edits, and I didn't like how it was coming off. I was going into that ranty, spouty information mode that I go into, so... Let's clean it up, and we're going to start with the easiest part of it. I kind of knew I was going to be happy with the ILNP polishes. They've been in business for a very long time. They seem to have a very strong loyalty. I see them popping up a lot in my Instagram feed. So I had a feeling the formulas would work great, and they were going to be well pigmented, which, as we saw today, they very much were. What was beyond my expectations was how quickly the polish dried. Even the Sally Hansen one dried a much faster than what I'm used to. And maybe that's partly because of the Miracle Gel formula. I'm not a convert to regular nail polish yet, but I am going to be a lot more willing to pick up regular polish over the gel version of it. Now seeing that there truly are formulas that dry a lot faster as compared to the ones that I remember from my uh, younger years using it. <laughs> The Sally Hansen Drugstore Gel, though, that is comparable to most gels I'll find online. While I did have some bumps in the road with it and a couple things I didn't truly like about it, it's still a good gel. It was still a good formula. I definitely like that pink one. I thought that was super cute. I do feel, though, I can buy gels cheaper online than in the drugstore like that. So... While I think the formula is fine, it is a brand I would buy again if I found it at a really good price and it's not a color I, I already have or one that I'm really, really low on. The gel transformer kit, um, let's just say I wasn't impressed with the results and um, everything that came inside of it. And I started going down this really deep rabbit hole because I was wanting to see if I could find Sensational like on a website somewhere or like purchase it directly through them. And that's when I found out they're owned by this company called Pacific Worldwide that's based out of California. They have license agreements with Revlon as well. So they seem to be a, a fairly large company. The owner of Pacific Worldwide, uh, when they started this uh, company, if you will. They also were behind the company Nailene and those nail products, and that's underneath this Pacific Worldwide umbrella. They also have another well-known nail company under this umbrella called Trim. It used to be owned by a company named W.E. Bassett, based out of Connecticut. And Pacific Worldwide merged with W.E. Bassett. There was a news article from 2011 that states after this merger between those two companies, Pacific Worldwide became the fifth largest cosmetics company and the second largest nail company by sales, uh, <laughs> by sales in food, drug, and mass retailers worldwide. I would like to think a company that's that big um, and works with, you know, places like Revlon when they're putting out a product like this, it would leave a little bit better of an impression and results. I do want to be fair, though, to the product as always. When I go to the Amazon page, I can see now it's coming from an independent seller or some type of reseller. It's not coming directly from Pacific Worldwide or Sensational or their uh, warehouses. It did come directly from an Amazon warehouse, so anything is possible with the item moving that much in transit between all these different warehouses and hands. I don't think it was a, a case of something opened and returned or used. You could very clearly tell everything was brand new and sealed and never used. I just think maybe the product may have been sitting in a warehouse for way too long and that altered the formula. Which is going to happen with truly any cosmetics or nail polishes in general. There are other resellers and other sites. So, you know, I 
did see I could find it other places for still about that same $20, but instead of trying it again and seeing if maybe I just got a bad one um, or a bad batch, I'm, I'll just save the $20. I'm sure there's some other random nail stuff that's going to come up that I'm going to want to buy and I know I really like, so... <laughs> I did go to Sensation Nails website because I was a little curious to see if there were any other products they still offer or sell. And while on their website they do offer gel polishes, at least for me here in the US, I couldn't purchase anything directly through their website. It would give me links to a Walmart page or an Amazon page to buy it through there. Okay, nail besties. I think that is where we will go ahead and wrap up the video because I'm getting into that a lot of information mode while we're talking about the review. So <laughs> thank you so much. And oh, while I was editing this video, I noticed I am 10 shy of 200 subs. And I'm going to say like, I didn't, I never thought I was going to be saying that I almost have 200 subs. So Thank you so much to those who have subbed and engaged with the videos and I just it means so much to someone like me who's a smaller content creator it's just you should see me right now my dimples are coming out really hard <laughs> but I'm not gonna lie I am a Leo so we're a little you know narcissistic I would like to see my sub count grow just a little bit more so if you enjoy nail related content like tutorials, reviews, memes, your sub would mean the world to me. I do upload a long video every Saturday and the occasional short. Next week's video is going to be a little something different. No reviews this time. I am finally going to introduce my long promised unsolved mystery story time while I work on nail designs. I may post a little teaser short in the coming days, so stay tuned. <laughs> but my nail besties, thank you again so much for hanging out with me and trying this nail experiment with me and helping me find that love again for regular nail polish. And you know I gotta do it. From the wise mind of my girl, Sailor Mercury, be pure, be honest, be beautiful. I love you nail besties. Bye!